Hey, 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 everyone. It is your girl, Tracy L. James, and I'm back. That's right. I am back with a brand new interview with an amazing businesswoman. Let me tell you something. I can't wait to share this woman with you today. Okay. I kind of been stalking her, you know, kind of cyber stalking her on like LinkedIn, you know, you know, you come across decent content from time to time. And then you come across really good content and you start stalking it, you start following it, right? And so I've been following her for a while and I am super excited that she said yes to allowing me to interview her and share it with each of you today. So the woman I'm talking about is Joy Jackson. She is a dynamic transformational speaker and coach. She is also an Amazon number one best-selling author. And she is the owner of Speaking of Joy. And her company encourages women to unleash the power within to walk in their God-given purpose. And you know how I feel about purpose. It's what drives you and it's what's going to help you get exactly what God intended for you to receive. So thank you so much, Joy, for joining me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tracy, for having me. And I'm so glad you stalked me because we're here today. <laughs> you know, it's weird when I tell people that I'm like, I've kind of been stalking this person for a moment, you know, because oh, I always, good. you know, everyone has this moment where they may share something that's enlightening. Mm -hmm. And always what I want to do is I want to see, was it just a glimmer? Mm -hmm. Or yes, is it something absolutely. that's really, absolutely. really, really there? Because my intent is that my content be something that gives back and it has something of substance to it. Absolutely. So I always want to vet my guests yeah. before I invite <laughs> them, yeah. you know? No, absolutely. I get it. Thank you so you much know, for having Because me. there's some interviews I have recorded that have not seen, seen the light of day. <laughs> I was like, haven't seen the light of day. No, I no, because I didn't effectively vet, mm -hmm. but I am so excited to have you here to talk about the work that you're doing you. and how you want to impact the world. So y'all know what I do every single time I'm interviewing, I'm gonna ask this question. So just get ready, get ready. It's about to go. So, all right, I'm ready. All right, Joy. Okay, so who are you and oh. why do you do what you do? Oh. Okay. Who, okay, so who am I? I am a woman of God who believes in living on purpose. I am a woman who wants to impact change. I want people when they come in contact with me, whether big or small, to have an opportunity where their lives are better because of their interaction with me. So I am a woman who believes in faith. So speaking of joy really has four pillars, faith, authenticity, confidence, and truth. That's who I am. I am a woman who believes in truth. I believe in God. I believe in being my authentic self. And I believe in being confident and not confident to the point of arrogance, but confident to the point of knowing that I have something to offer the world. And why do I do what I do? Simply Tracy, because it's a calling on my life. When I first started speaking of joy, I was a leadership coach. So I did leadership training uh, because I spent years in, I have 18 years experience in training and development. So writing content, doing de uh, development is not new to me. And every time I would do a workshop and I was working for an organization, I was a chief strategy officer, things looked really good. And every time I would walk into the board meeting or walk into um, any type of meeting in the boardroom, I felt out of place. And what I realized was I have more to offer than this leadership role. So when I, when I, I lost my job, when I started speaking of joy, it was leadership company. And I was doing leadership training, development, diversity, equity, inclusion, all the stuff that was easy to do, but I wasn't fulfilled. So I always say there was a time in my life where I was full, but not fulfilled. Six figure salary, everything was looking good, but ultimately I wanted to be who God wanted me to be. And there was unrest in me doing the work that I thought I was doing. So I started speaking of joy under the pretense of leadership development and coaching. And it was working, but it wasn't my heart's work. And so I went back to God, like, God, you didn't allow me 
to leave corporate America to be a corporate minded person. So what is it that you want me to do? And I spent a lot of time in prayer and just really seeking him. And that's when I realized what I do is I encourage women. I encourage women to walk in their God-given purpose because so many of us uh, know that there's something else, but we don't know how to get to else or we're afraid to get to else or rejection creeps in or fear creeps in. So my job is to empower women to say, hey, if you want it, if you walk with God and you do the work, you can have it. That's I love me. it. I love it. <laughs> and me. see, yeah. and I think one of the reasons that you really stood out to me is because I've kind of been in this transition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also, I started out in leadership. My very first book was yeah. on leadership. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, my second book was written to the leader to help them further develop themselves. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm still kind of in that space, but I knew that there was something else. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And, and you definitely write about really just getting quiet and getting in that space and allowing God to speak to you. So there's some new things coming, some different things coming. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm excited about it. So I, I'm over here getting goosebumps as you're but let me tell, But let me tell you, Tracy, that's not an easy thing to do because the corporate world doesn't encourage the spirit world. And we as individuals who believe in God, we know that we are spirit. And if you're spirit, we say carnal, and I don't mean carnal in a negative way, but carnal meaning flesh, you can't walk in the flesh and in the spirit at the same time. And so, so many times we are uh, encouraged, whether uh, consciously or subconsciously, not to bring that part. So even when I started speaking of joy, it was really hard for me to say, I believe in God. Not that I, I was ashamed of it, but I was conditioned that I couldn't say that at work. I could So to say to somebody at work who's going to tell, I'll pray for you, that's not something that you're encouraged to do because it's like, Lord, I'll be in HR, you know, <laughs> trying to live out right. this, this Christian right. world. And so yeah. it, it came a time where, especially as an entrepreneur, where I had to decide what I'm going to do. So it became a, a decision, a conscious decision. Okay, Joy, are you going to walk for God and live the life that he's called you to live? Or are you going to try to straddle the fence to make people comfortable? and be uncomfortable in the process. So I decided, hey, listen, I'm going to walk in what's truth for me and and appreciate the people who are called to me to hear the message and then pray for those who aren't. And that's what I had to do. And that was hard because the idea that I would exclude some people in a a world of Mm. inclusiveness and inclusivity right now made it really hard for me, but I had to be true to who I was. And to what God was calling me to do. So it was hard for me to say I only work with women because I come from a role of leadership and majority of leaders are men. So it was hard for me to say that. And so there were there have been uh, moments along the way where I had to choose the fork in the road. And I had to say, you know what, God, I trust you that if you've given me this gift and you've given me this purpose, that you're going to bring the people who need to hear it. And you're going to allow me to speak hope into the people who need it. And so I've just kind of been out here like, okay, God, we're going to do it, you know, and that's, that's been it, but it's, it's been, it's been a journey because it's, it's the realization that it's, it's bigger than what we expect, but we recognize that there are areas that we're going to have to move that aren't going to be the, the a road always traveled. So, yeah. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true because, um, just in that process of, you know, making the decision, I'm going to step out, I'm going to build this mm-hmm. business, yeah. I'm going to speak, I'm going uh-huh. to train, I'm going to do these things, right? Yeah. And then trying to be authentic to who I am. Absolutely. And, you know, and I think for me, that that struggle at that point was the reality of who I was, mm-hmm. was that I had never been fully comfortable being me fully Absolutely. in every yeah. space I had been in. Yeah. And and I think a lot of women feel that way that they can't bring all of themselves exactly. into the exactly. workplace because they'll they're afraid of being seen as too emotional as being um being that angry woman that angry aggressive uh-huh yes, black, yeah. woman. black woman yeah <laughs> yeah uh-huh. if you are too passionate as you express your opinions and 
as a result, so many pieces of myself weren't there and mm-hmm. moments where I felt like, let me lay hands, let me yeah. pray, mm-hmm. let yeah. me sing with you. Yeah, yeah, let yeah. Me, absolutely, absolutely. Let's go into absolutely. some work. It was tough because that wasn't what was accepted in the corporate Absolutely. workplace. And then as I made the transition into being a business owner, I still found myself kind of bound. Yeah, absolutely. And Absolutely. I remember having people say to me, well, Tracy, I don't know if you want to you know, share a whole lot of scripture. I don't know yeah, if you really want absolutely, to talk absolutely. a whole lot about God and, you know, that's going to repel people. But now, you know, really applying, I got my degree in marketing, so I know how to figure <laughs> yeah, out absolutely. the target yeah. market. Absolutely. And absolutely. the whole point is I want somebody to repel. Yeah. Because I'm not for everybody. There you because go. Because oh, yeah. I, I love God, but there are times where I have a potty mouth and I'm just, <laughs> he's still working on me, y'all. Yeah, he just absolutely, is. absolutely. So yeah, yeah. there are people that that makes uncomfortable. Right. And I'm going, okay, this is a word that a human being said was wrong. Mm-hmm. Did God say it was wrong? And then they tell me I'm I'm rationalizing. It is okay. Okay, maybe no, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But I for me, it. I know God's looking at my heart. And so I want to keep my heart right. Absolutely. And so um, as you've been on this journey, what has been the biggest obstacle for you to overcome? To finally Ooh. be in that space where you feel I'm joy. Okay. And I can uh, walk uh, in as joy. Yeah. Okay. So being joy has never really been an issue for me because I've always been able to understand who I am. I've always known. I mean, my mama put an E on the end of my name. Listen, I ain't normal. Okay. <laughs> I got a gap in my teeth. I ain't normal. Like, I really figured that out. But what was really hard for me was overcoming rejection because I spent my life uh, applying myself. So, so I remember doing, um, a personality test years ago with one of my bosses and she said, you're a risk taker. And I was like, really? She was like, but you're a calculated risk taker. In other words, you only take risks that you know, you'll be good at. So I, everything I've applied myself to I've done. I'm not the type of person that just goes out doing something random if I don't know the outcome. So I've basically created a false sense of protection for myself because I've never heard the word no. I've never, I mean, apart from, you know, ridiculous relationships and foolish, but but in my, my professional grown self, I've never heard the word no. Uh, I've never been laid off a job. I've never been fired. I've never been told I wasn't good enough. So that was hard to be in a space where I'm now putting myself out there. I'm being vulnerable. I'm sharing my story. I'm sharing my experiences and hearing no or calling on some people saying, hey, I got this great product. I got this great workshop. And they're like, oh, we don't want that. So the biggest, biggest fear for biggest thing I had to overcome was rejection because I never experienced it. And I think most of us, if we realize it in our lives, we don't know how to handle rejection. We don't know how to handle the, what if they don't like me? What if they don't believe in me? What if it doesn't work out? And what does that say about me? And so for me, rejection was a big deal because I tied it to my worth and to who I was. So when you said no to me, it wasn't no to what I was offering. It was no to me. And so the biggest obstacle was recognizing that if you said no, it's not personal. I'm just not for you. Or maybe this is not the right time. And so understanding that rejection comes with this journey. I mean, Jesus was rejected, right? So the stone that the builders, you know, the stone that the builders, so he was rejected. So if he was rejected, why on earth would I not be rejected? But I've protected myself against that. And so really now exposing myself saying, here is who joy is, because I've been comfortable with joy for 42 years, but the world may not be comfortable. So understanding that I'm not for everybody and understanding that I'm going to hear no, I'm going to hear you're not good enough. I'm going to hear this is not what we want from you and being okay and not tying that to my self-worth or my value or letting it defeat me to the point where I'm back to God like, did you really tell me to do that? Because these people say they didn't want that. So really just reprioritizing, understanding what that looks like. That's been the hard, I mean, I still deal with that every day. Just the idea of understanding that just because I'm not for everybody doesn't mean I'm not for somebody. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and dealing with that. 
Yeah, I get it. I get it totally because um, when I was younger, I was an achiever. This, this uh-huh. you know, yeah. if there was a goal, I set the goal, I achieved Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And so when I found myself not achieving goals, it was Bam. looking around going, wait, hold well, yeah. on. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Yeah, and man. realizing yes, and under, reframing rejection, reframing oh, yeah. failure. Yes. You know, um, I remember hearing Will Smith say this several years ago, mm-hmm. fail forward, fail yes. often, fail, what is it? Fail quickly or something. Mm-hmm. But yes. it was all about reframing failure in that space yes. so that you would see it as the next step An opportunity yeah absolutely. it's the next step and you know because hey now you know what don't work yeah okay so yeah. this didn't work let's figure out what part of this worked did it all yeah. work or was yeah. it the wrong person and so understanding that and getting in that space is a huge huge deal and and you know, it creates it recreates freedom yes it creates freedom when we get to a point where we are who we are unapologetically and when we are who we are and we understand that we're not everybody's cup of tea, we understand that um, there are people waiting and and we may not have even arrived to those people. It helps us say, you know what, I'm going to walk in my freedom and my truth and I'm going to trust and believe that those who need to hear, those who need to be a part, those who are, will be a part of my truth tribe will come versus seeking them out or feeling bad because not everybody will go. I have a good friend named Regina, Regina Alexander, and she said her mother taught her SW, 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 SW. Okay. Okay. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. Oh, I love that. And, I, and we did, I did, a, I did a, a session with her and she brought that up and I'm like, oh my gosh, because it helps you reframe. So there will be some who will gravitate. There will be some who, who won't. And you have to get an attitude of kind of like, so what? Because there is someone who's called to whatever it is I'm doing. And when I focus on that person, I find joy. I find fulfillment. I find peace. I find all those things. Instead of trying to appease the people who won't, because here's the thing about the people who won't, they won't. So I can accommodate, adjust, recreate to fit these people. They're not called to me. They're not my people. So it doesn't matter. So SW, 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 SW. Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. I absolutely positively love that because- One of the things that I share often is about the parable of the talents, Mm -hmm. okay, and how everyone has a gift. Mm -hmm. You may have one talent, you may have five, you may have 15. It doesn't matter how many you have, but there is somebody somewhere waiting for you to sow that talent into them, into their lives. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every problem in the world Every problem, Lord, there's not one problem we have in the world right now yeah. that wouldn't be solved if but, people were on absolutely. their post. If absolutely. people were where they were created to be. Absolutely. And most people don't, the unfortunate part is most people don't even know what that is. You know, I, I, was, I had a client yesterday I was talking to and she's an, uh, an artist, she's an actress. And we were talking and I said, I asked her, I said, what's your gift? And she said, teaching. And I said, okay. So tell me how teaching has manifested in your talent. Because you're an actress, you're a voiceover person, you're a theater person. So I was talking to her and I told her, I said, the Bible says your gift will make room for you and bring you before a great man. So God has equipped us with talents, but there is something special, unique. Before he formed us in our mother's womb, he knew us. He put something in us. And so many times we're operating in our talents that we never get to our gift because the gift is what God is going to use to change people's lives, to open doors, to break down strongholds, to release people. But we're so busy. So for example, I tell people I'm a great speaker and I'm not saying that to be boastful, that I'm good at it. I'm good at speaking, but that's not my gift. That's a talent. My gift is encouraging people and giving them hope. And when I really understood that, then I'm like, God, I can do that on the radio. I can do that on a podcast. I can do that in one-on-one coaching. I can do that on the street with my neighbor. 
So I recognize the power of my gift more than the ability of my talent. And so many people, we, we get caught up in the talents. So we're like, oh, I'm really good at this. But are, if you're good at it, is that your talent or is that your gift? Because your gift carries anointing. And your gift will is what God is going to use for his kingdom. And the gift is what really releases people. The gift is what benefits. The gift is how people are added to the body of Christ. But we spend so much time in the talents. And so I challenge people, spend, and I just told her yesterday, I'm like, listen, as I've known her for years. I'm like, you need to go back and ask God what your gift is. Because your gift is where your heart is. Your gift, where, you know, that the gift is how you find freedom. The gift is how you find joy. And so as we were talking, I'm like, her gift is the power of storytelling. And I said, because the words are anointed. So that's why theater, that's why voiceovers, that's why narration, all of those things happen for you. It's not because of, that the fact you can speak it's because of the gift and it's the anointing and most people most of us don't ever really spend time to understand our gifts and i'm not talking about the you know the gifts of the spirit we know those you know i mean we can spend yeah, all day yeah, yeah. on you know uh exhortation you know not exhort, exhortation you know help i mean we can talk about but it, there is even in that there is something specific that we were all called to do and what is that thing that god has anointed us to do yeah it's about what you can do, mm-hmm. but what you were called to do, Absolutely. what you were created to do. Absolutely. And I definitely have been caught up in all the things I could do. Yes, yes, yes. yes. For a but very we all long are. time. Absolutely. But, you know, we all are, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, hello, I'm Tracy and I'm a recovering people pleaser. Hey. So, Hi, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, one of the things I struggled with was as a young child, I did whatever I was told. I just want to get in trouble. It was too many adults in that house. I didn't have time. I just wanted to be left alone to do what I wanted to do. And I found out staying out of trouble enabled me to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So to stay out of trouble, I created these personas to fit whomever I was with absolutely, so that I could stay out of trouble. Well, the problem with that is... You don't end up getting to know you. Absolutely. And so I was a grown woman before I really got to know who I was and what I really liked. Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking with a good friend of mine and she was talking about how she ate eggs for years, decades, because everybody else liked them. So she just kept eating them. Uh-huh. And then she finally just hit a point where she you know, was like, you know what? I don't like I'm- it. <laughs> and I'm yeah. not going to eat them. Yeah. I don't care how you prepare them. Yeah. I'm not going to eat eggs. And she's like, it, it that just brings her joy just to be able to say, no, no to thank you. <laughs> yeah. And I got to thinking about it. And I said, you know what? There's a lot of things I said yes to because grandmama said, yeah. mm-hmm. mama said, absolutely. Auntie said, my counselor at school said, my teacher yeah. at school said. And so I was had I followed my heart, my heart wanted to pursue the arts i wanted mm-hmm. to dance i wanted to act i wanted to sing mm-hmm. yeah. i saw i want my name on the great white way yeah absolutely that was where i wanted to be and but you know i made certain decisions after i got pregnant my senior year in high school mm-hmm. which sent me in a different direction mm-hmm. and as a result i made decisions that were safe mm-hmm. But don't we all do safe decisions? I mean, it's, and I'll say as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, uh, as a daughter, as a this and this, we all make safe decisions. Because if I'm, if I, first of all, safety helps us. Safety give, gives us the ability to move every day. So we need safety just to survive. And that's how we've been conditioned. That mm-hmm. safety is super important. So because safety is so important, we will always choose the safe right, route. We will always choose it. And so the idea of going against the grain, the idea of doing something starkly different than what everybody expects, that means that I, I will be exposed and ultimately I may be unsafe. So we all choose safety. And we may not call it that, but hey, listen, if you stayed at the job that you are on now and you know you don't like it, that's safety. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you know you don't like him or her, however you live, and you're still there, that's safety. 
if you've been praying about leaving and going to another city and you haven't left, that's safety. So we do safety all the time. We don't wear our hair because of safety. We don't go on without makeup because of safety. I mean, we live a life of, because say if I expose myself, I'm, I'm opening myself to judgment and I don't want to be judged. So I'll stay safe under the radar where nobody will judge me. And then I'll convince myself that that's the life I'm supposed to live. And then I wake up one day and realize that I absolutely hate my life. Yeah. And then I don't know absolutely, do. and nobody tells me what to do when I have that revelation. When that light bulb comes on, and I'm like, you know what? I don't like eggs. I will not eat them on the bus. I will not eat them with the fuss. I do not like green eggs. I do like it. when we get to that point. Nobody tells us what to do with that, and that's a disservice. I believe we do um, to to women, especially in our communities. We don't tell you that it's okay to say no. It's okay to say that's not for me. It's okay to say I don't like that. We, we're not, or I, I want to do this. We don't even teach that you can pursue your dreams. Oh yeah. You're supposed to get a job. You're supposed to have a, be a wife. You're supposed to have kids. Oh, you're supposed to live this life. And you're supposed to meet your husband in high school. You're supposed to meet him in college. You're not supposed to be 30 before. You're not supposed to meet him online. I mean, we've taught, we've taught these, these behaviors. And so when women are out here expressing themselves or learning to, to, to develop, we're now like, ooh, you're not married? Ooh. You know, we, we've, we've conditioned ourselves that those things are not acceptable. And then we wonder why we're unhappy, wonder why we're sad, wonder why we have depression and anxiety and all these unhealthy coping mechanisms is because nobody told us, hey, it's okay to choose you. It's okay to be you. It's okay to not like, it's okay to say no. We haven't taught our children. And I have, I have eight-year-old twin daughters, okay? Pray for me. Listen. If Bless you. Look at you. Bless yes. you. <laughs> eight-year-old twin daughters. I didn't and daughters and I'm trying my best to teach them the power of their voice even at eight so little things like we play and they say stop so I tell my husband hey listen when they say stop we should stop although they're laughing ha 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 ha, ha but we want to teach the power of the word no we want to, and not even just the word no but the power of their voice so even if they they say stop they need to understand that there's a reaction because that's how we teach that your voice has power so that's how I teach them that when they get 20 and they say what they want, they understand that they can command that authority because they were taught that at six, seven, and eight years old. But we don't do that. We don't teach our children that you are valuable and that what you say and who you are is mega important and the world will shift at your words. And that's what I want to teach. The world would, if Jesus, could, if God could speak and things change and we're made in his image, that means we have the power to say the same things, but we don't walk in that authority. We don't walk in dominion. And when we were created, we were created in dominion. We were created to rule this earth, but we don't act like that. And so we wonder why we're sad. We wonder why we're stressed. We wonder why we're frustrated. We wonder why we're depressed, why we have a midlife crisis. It's because we don't understand the power of who we are and what we have. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, Cause I'll tell you, as far as a lot of folks were concerned, when I decided, uh, I guess it's been five, almost six years ago, I just decided I'm moving to Houston. And the way I did it, you know, it was, it was one of those things where I had some conversations with a select group of people. Mm -hmm. And I started laying out what it needed to look like. Mm -hmm. And I, I made up in my mind that this is what I was doing. And I began to make preparations, Absolutely. but I did not share with everybody until it was deeply rooted in me. Absolutely. And I knew that I could be like, no, this is what I'm doing. Absolutely. And part yeah. of the reason why we can't share our vision with everybody is because a, we, we already know that everybody's not going to agree. But what I always tell my clients is the reason people can't support you is because their responses are rooted in their own fear. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. So they wouldn't move to Houston. Right. So because <laughs> they wouldn't do it, they're going to give you all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. Oh, because yeah. Oh, they baby. wouldn't leave their job. <laughs> I, got a, I got a laundry <laughs> list. Yes, that's it. Um, and because they wouldn't do it, they and so it's fear. Their yeah. fear is projected on you to the degree that they say, you know what, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, I announced it Christmas. Okay. 
and literally started i started splitting my time in Mm -hmm. january with (laughs) between you and jackson and everybody was like wait you're really doing this yes i quit my job I am Mm -hmm. starting my business. I am stepping out on faith. I'm writing my first book. I am doing this. Absolutely. And making those type of decisions that it was about me. That was it. It's about me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a freeing thing to be in that space. Absolutely. Because especially when you never felt comfortable enough to be free Mm -hmm. to do those things. So if there is a woman entrepreneur watching this right now Mm -hmm. who is struggling or that person who's stealing that job they don't like Mm -hmm. what advice would you give them as they take that step (sighs) to move in that right direction first thing I would say is do it scared you are never going to be 100% settled with your decisions because you're going to always find reasons why now is not the time this is not the right move for you but I believe, honestly, Tracy, that when we, as, as women of God, um, are inspired, it's God-given. And because it's God-given, you already have the answer. So stop seeking other people for confirmation. <laughs> that would be my word. Stop seeking other people for confirmation. If it is in you, then that means that God will make provision for you. You've got to do it scared and take the first step. Now, God gives us wisdom. So listen, don't walk up your job tomorrow if you ain't got no money. Like, let's be be factual. Like, you know, don't say God told me to leave my job and you don't have no savings. You're living check to check. But understand that when God opens the door for you, he's going to orchestrate your steps. So if there's something in you that you absolutely believe that it's time for you to do, Go back to God and say, Lord, I want to do this. I believe this is you. God begin to prepare the way for me. And then one one of the things I believe is we always pray to God, but we don't ever walk out of that prayer expecting God to do it and looking for it. So now if I say, God, I want to move. I believe that you're sending me to another city. God, show me and confirm that for me, but but create the opportunity. So then when you get that call from a 281 or uh, an 832 or a 713 area, you're like, oh, Okay, so first thing I would say is do it scared, but trust that if God has given you the vision, he's going to make the provision, which are the steps that you need in order to get there. And stop looking for other people to give you the answer that God has already given. Joy finna make me shout, y'all, okay? <laughs> but but these, and these, are, these are, and I'll say this because these are lessons that I have learned and that I'm learning even now that I'm walking in. I'm not saying anything that I don't believe. It's true. I have spent years, I'm an only child. So I've spent years uh, with family, family, friends around me and hearing things from God and going to people like, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And do you think, of, even my husband, I'll go to him with ideas like, what? You know, now listen, God gonna speak to him, but God has already told me what to do. So I'm in here like, well, what do you think? How, well, do you think I ought to? And then God keeps reminding me, I've told you what to do. I've told you. And so you just need to trust me more than you trust anybody else. Man will fail you, but I won't. And my word is true. So if I tell you that this is what I have for you, then you need to trust that. And so if you're looking for confirmation, look to me versus the people that are around you. And we look for confirmation from people instead of from God. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I definitely, that has definitely been (laughs) one of the things that I know personally I've struggled with and I've seen a lot of my clients struggle with in trying to figure out what's, what's next, what's next. Mm -hmm. Well, he's Mm -hmm. shown you what's next. Now you need to ask, what's your first step? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, he's going to give you that. He may not Mm -hmm. give you much past that first step at first, but that's all he, you know, but he's going to give it to you when you need it. But that's, but that's all you need. Like we want to see the end result. And God is like, if I show you the end, you ain't going to even be prepared for it because it's bigger than what you eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the good things I have in store for you. So what I got is going to blow your mind. You wouldn't even take the first step if you saw the end. So I'm going to give you just enough mm-hmm. so that you can actually, it's like, it's like the trailer to a movie. I'm going to show you the trailer. Oh yeah. So that you want to go see the movie. Absolutely. And while you're sitting in the movie, you get the end. Right now, I need you to watch the trailer and say, okay, that's enough for me to make the investment. And that's what God is saying. I just need you to make the investment. And the investment is, I must take that first step. I must step on faith. 
I'm going to trust and believe you, God. I believe that you're going to open the door. You're going to make the way. And that's all I need. And if, if you do that much, God, then if that's all I got to do, then you got everything else under control. Absolutely. Absolutely. Joy, you know what? I hate to wrap this up because this is no, good. Okay. <laughs> this is good, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So ladies, I hope you are getting something out of this conversation. And one of the key things I hope you took away from this is the fact that you gotta sometimes that you well, you gotta do it scared. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and um, what helped me make my leap, I read the book, The Year of Yes by mm-hmm. Shonda Rhimes. Mm-hmm. And that commitment of saying yes to the things that scare you yeah completely transformed Absolutely. her professionally and Absolutely. personally she became a different person in many mm-hmm. ways because she had been hiding mm-hmm. and I got then I said okay so she kept saying yes to what was she was afraid of mm-hmm. so what's out there for well, me yeah if I just on the yes. other side of me saying yes to the thing yeah, that absolutely. I'm scared of. Yeah, absolutely. So it was just that thing. And the first yes was make this move. Absolutely. And it's been a good move. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um any parting words for the ladies before we wrap up? Simply you can do it. You've already been created for it. That's it. You you can do it. You've been created for it. The time is now. I bind every spirit of fear, rejection, uh, being devalued, low self-esteem, self-worth. I bind that because you have the power to do it. As a child of God, whether you call him God or Jehovah, Yeshua, whomever, you were created for something special. And now we just got to do it. So do it, do it scared and do it in confidence because even if you fail, that's a lesson. So now I know I don't want to do that. I can do it this way. So all of these experiences are working together to make you the woman that you need to be. Amen, amen, and amen. All right. So Joy, how can the ladies connect with you? Oh, easy, easy, easy. Speaking of joy on all social media platforms, but it's J-O-Y-E. Y'all heard me say earlier, I don't know why my mama put an E on the end of my name, Uh, but she did. So I say it's excitement, enthusiasm, energetic. But yeah, so speaking of joy on all social media platforms, you can uh, visit my website, www.speakingofjoy.com. Or you can reach me on social media. You can email me, joy at speakingofjoy.com. So any ways you can reach out to me, I would love to hear your stories, would love to journey with you and encourage you along the way. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I know you mentioned to me earlier before we started the interview about a new devotional. Can you tell yes, us a little bit ma'am. about what you're working on? Let me tell you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so first let me just say that God is good and he will blow your mind in ways that you never expected. So a few years ago, I started writing. I'm not a journaler. It's just not my thing. But I started writing uh, when I lost my job, when this was the middle of the pandemic. I had these two little girls at home with me. Me and my husband were home together third day. Uh, and this was, yeah, Lord, we're still together every day. Ah, almost 13 years in June. We, we've we been, okay. So that's another story. But anyway, so I was, I was writing because um, I was really just frustrated and I was like, God, you know, I go from a six figure salary to, to a nice severance, but that's going to run out. So what do we do? And so I started praying and I just remember God saying to the disciples, uh, you know, let us go to the other side. And then talking to the disciples about their faith because he went to sleep on the boat. And the disciples woke him up like, it's a big storm right here, Lord, carest thou not that we perish? And he was like, oh, you have little faith. And so I started writing because I started praying. My heart was so heavy. This is after George Floyd. This was all of that stuff. And I said, God, I know you've got a purpose for everything that you do, but don't you care that we're perishing? Your children are not, we're, we're struggling. You know, people are mentally having mental health issues. COVID has us bound and locked in the house. Like, God, don't you care? And he reminded me, I said, we're going to the other side. And so I started writing from that place to encourage myself. And it turned into a devotional. So the devotional is called Shipwrecked. 
from purpose to power. And there are four areas and it's called shipwreck because every single area, it's purpose, promise, preparation, and power. Each of those has a story about a ship. I ain't know that many ships in the Bible, but it's called Shipwreck from Purpose to Power. And it's a 30 day devotional. And each day I talk about, I share anecdotes, a specific scripture for meditation and prayer. There are reflection activities. Um, there are prayers, corporate prayers and individual prayers. And it's just an opportunity for us to trust God more. And by the grace of God, um, I put the pre-orders out last week and I have sold out. Talk about let us go to the other side. I'm like, Jesus. So I have put uh, another order in reprint, but it's called, I, I invite you, you can go to my website and find it, speakingofjoy.com. It's right there. And it's a 30 day devotional. And in a couple of weeks, once this new order is sent out, we're actually going to do a journey of discussion together so that we all can trust God, believe God, and believe that he's going to take us to whatever that promise is on the other side. Love it. Love it. Joy, yeah, thank, thank you so thank much you, for taking Tracy, time out you. of your busy schedule thank to you so much. connect with me. And ladies, I hope you got something amazing out of this conversation. Listen, um, put your questions in the comments. We'll be watching this. We will answer your comments. Reach out to Joy if you are so led, because I'm going to tell you, she got some amazing things inside of her to help you move to that next level. So um, I look forward to hearing your stories and connecting with you next time. So until we meet again, just remember that no matter what happens, just do it regardless. Zero excuses allowed. Take care and I love you. Bye-bye.